Good evening, everyone. I am uh, Dr. Tina Salzman, the principal of the high school, and it's my pleasure this evening to share a little bit of the background information regarding our one-to-one -one initiative. Um, the board had the luxury of hearing about it at our last meeting, but I do have some fine folks from the high school, both uh, teaching staff and some students, along with uh, fellow administrators and technology innovators. Um, so maybe just to begin, I'll ask the rest of the team to come up here, and we can transition smoothly. Early on, knowing that we were potentially moving to a one-to-one -one initiative, we took the initial step to create a pilot group. So we identified four staff members early on in the school year who had a, a heightened interest in moving forward. They had done a, quite a bit of work in their classrooms and taken the steps to turn their classrooms into more of an electronic environment. So we identified those four staff members. All of their students in their classrooms were eligible to have a one-to-one -one device. Um, and so we put a number of things in place that we're going to talk about um, in, in more depth in just a minute. So initially what we, what we learned was we need to ha needed to have learning components in place, both for students and also to help support our parents. Um, so Mike, if I could have you come over and talk a little bit about the learning modules that were required. Uh, so as we got started, we wanted to make sure that all the students had a basic proficiency of digital citizenship so that as they go home, they, under, they have an understanding of what it is to be a digital citizen. Um, they understand what cyberbullying is. They understand information literacy and uh, that they understand what copyright is. So those were the different modules. And each of the students had to uh, finish those with 100% proficiency. Yeah, yep. So um, our staff development this year has been focused on getting content online so that we can start to uh, facilitate student learning in an online environment. Additionally, as I said earlier, um, we also have a parent component. One of the things that we learned is that we needed to help support our parents and help walk them through many of the, the steps. So we held parent evenings where our parents were invited and provided them the information about the why. Why were we going to one-to-one -one devices in our classrooms and why that was important for our students' learning. We also helped walk them through a lot of the legal ease around the insurance forms and the insurance that parents can purchase. So um, for roughly $30.60, I believe uh, parents can have 100% full coverage um, with a zero deductible. So we went through and explained that with them. We helped them to, to figure out, okay, how do I navigate the website and actually sign up, along with having a paper copy available for them. And then also um, showed them simple things like how to check your son or daughter's history. Um, believe it or not, that's something that's relatively easy that parents can do and that we've asked parents to do um, as sort of uh, an opportunity to be interactive with the devices that are going home. So next, I think I'll have um, maybe a couple of our teachers and students talk about their experiences in the classroom. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, what I've done with a lot of my classroom is um, I've used I use a couple of specific apps. Uh, one of them is called Schoology. Essentially, it's an online classroom environment where I can upload assignments, I can upload tests, uh, my students can complete those assignments on their iPad, submit them back to me. If they don't have internet access at home, that was a problem that we had, or an issue, I wouldn't say a problem because we, over, you know, we kind of dealt with it, but it was an issue that kind of came up, so any of my students that have to, they're able to download whatever they need to while they're at school, so they can get a hold of that. If they don't have internet access at home, if they don't have Wi-Fi at home, it doesn't interfere with their ability to get their job done or get their assignment done. It's not necessary. It can be helpful at times because it frees up their time. But if the kid didn't have it at home, they could stay after school, they could come in at lunch, they could download a video, they could download whatever they needed to. Um, so it's allowed me to provide them with content at additional times. It allows me to um, enter in their assignments in, a, in an electronic way if they want to. Um, some of my students said, I really like using pencil and paper, I want to do these on paper. So we said, okay, that's fine. We have them do everything on paper. They take a picture of it, they submit that electronically. So it works out great. Um, you wouldn't believe at the end of the day when I go, here's your homework, and they all just walk up to the board and take a picture of it, you know, because um, we post it on Schoology, we do things like that. Um, another thing that I, I have found really beneficial is we're able to use iPads in class that we can get instant feedback from every single one of my students all on a specific topic. So it's, an, it's a program that's called Get It, and the students have an addition. I create an account online, we create a classroom, they join the classroom. 
And then as I present a lesson, I can shoot them questions, and they can answer those questions. I can look at their answers. They can rate their level of understanding from one to five. Um, we've kind of come to an agreement about what each of those mean, so they can check in with me, and I, I can tell them I want you to check in with this app. They can click where, what level of understanding they're at. And in about 10 seconds, I can get a feel for where every single student in my room, how they feel they understand something. And I think that alone has really changed the way that I teach my class because, you know, in the past it's been, you know, raise your hand if you have a question. Does everybody understand that? Like, fill it out on a piece of paper. And then at the end of class, everybody leaves the room, and I'm looking through these checkout sheets going, whew, half of these guys didn't get this. I wish I could have done a, another example or two. Well, now I know right now how did they get it, how well they felt that they get it. They can give me a question. I can look at what their answer is, and I find that really beneficial. And some of my students like it. In fact, there were days where we were using it, and then for whatever reason, we just didn't open it that day, and one kid was like, how am I supposed to check in, you know? So um, it, it's handy, and I really like it. So, And I don't know, Colton, if you want to speak a little bit to your use and what you've seen in the classroom. Um, Colton's in my chemistry class, so. Um, one thing I like about this, especially the app Get It, because in class, no one, when he asks if you understand, if you don't understand, you don't really want to be the one, because sort of an embarrassment thing, like, oh, this is supposed to be easy, but I really don't get it, so I don't want to say it out loud, so I won't say anything. But with the app, you can click that you don't understand it, so you add a one, and he will get that, but the rest of the class won't see it. So really, it's sort of an, an, an anonymous thing that he will see that you need more help instead of having to blurt out to the class, I don't get this part. So I think it's a, uh, I love the iPad using it. I'm more, I'm paying more attention in class. I'm answering questions. Um, yeah, I think it's great. So that's kind of what our experience has been. I'm looking to ramp some things up, put some more content online, um, you know, see what ways I can support my students even more and get ideas from them about what would be helpful for me to make available to you to, to assist you and help make this easier. So um, that's kind of where we're at. So. Um, hi, I'm Alexa Larson. I'm a sophomore in Mr. Sudeman's A Push class, and um, I really enjoy the iPads. Um, it's it's a really good way to communicate with Mr. Sudeman and to um, fill out assignments and everything. Uh, we have the option of putting a, our A Push ebook on the iPad, and Mr. Sudeman. Um, has been really good about letting us either take notes on the iPad or write them out. And I personally um, really enjoy just handwriting them out. It helps me definitely learn better and understand um, our notes better. Um, but it's good to have that option definitely to have the iPad. Um, I really um, like how we can communicate. We uh, use Schoology all the time. And we can talk to our other students and classmates and get help and stuff. So that's that's really good. Um, I personally would not like doing like real assignments um, on the actual iPad. I enjoy writing them out, as I said. Um, but other than that, I really do enjoy the iPads. Hi, I'm Roxanne Jost. I'm a sophomore in Mr. Studeman's AP US History class. Um, so um, I am someone who, as uh, Alexa said, we have the option to either take our notes um, on the iPad or on our notebook. I personally really like taking my notes on the iPad for one of two reasons. One, it keeps me focused, I think, because iPad, you can sometimes you get a little distracted. There's the internet, yada, yada, yada. Um, so if my iPad, I'm using my iPad for notes, I can't use it for anything else. I just have to use it for notes, and it keeps me focused, and it's nice. And also, I'm using an app called Evernote, which is where <laughs> I take my uh, notes, and it's really nice. So if I leave my iPad in my locker or in the band room or whatever, I can still access my notes at home using the computer or my phone, which is really nice because I forget things a lot. Um, <laughs> I've also like really liked using Schoology, which is an app that Mr. Sudman uses a lot. He puts chapter quizzes on on Schoology, which is really nice because it's a good review. You can like look over the chapter, and especially if we have like three chapters for one test, like chapters 11, 12, and 13, I can go back to chapter 11 quiz and say, okay, this is what I need to review, make sure I know what I need to know. Um, so yeah, I really like the iPad initiative. I agree with Alexa in saying I don't think we should go completely paperless because I am a fan of writing things out. It helps me comprehend some stuff a little better. But I'm a fan of the iPads, and I really like how they've enhanced the classroom experience. Thank you. Oh, this has been an interesting journey for me because I'm not a tech guy. 
I'm kind of old fashioned, but it's been really good for my classroom. Um, using Schoology has been great because I can do updates and talk to the kids just like on Facebook, only it's on Schoology, which is great. Uh, I think we all have to remember that it's a tool and that uh, we have to guide students to their individual needs and sometimes that's not technology but it's a, definitely a tool that we can use for a lot of students and for Colton that's worked really well and if we don't try new tools we're not going to help the kids in ways they need to be helped so I think it's a wonderful thing and I'm moving ahead and learning from this guy over here Mike does a nice job he, he comes at my beck and call he's at my door in two minutes and I appreciate all your help you do a really nice job so it's good it's really good All right, uh, Noah Hollander. I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of time to just talk about uh, the future of the program. Uh, before I go there, I'm just going to clarify a little bit of what Dr. Selzman said. The insurance is actually 3960, uh, just in case there's any confusion out there to the 3060. Uh, still an incredibly great rate. Um, so I just want to talk about how we're going to move forward with the program. The reality is this. We started the program and we had four teachers involved in the initiative. We had 302 students uh, that uh, took home iPads. Uh, what we're moving to now is phase two. What that will look like is this, uh, as of December 15th, we'll begin parent meetings. Uh, one of the key things that we learned in starting the program was feedback says it is difficult for some parents to get out to the high school. And so one of the realizations we came to was we need to meet the parents where they're at. So one of the pieces that we're putting into the parent meetings going forward is we will hold them in the communities. Uh, we will be at the intermediate schools so that that enables parents to have a shorter distance to travel. Uh, and then we also realize that a couple of key components are uh, to meeting times. Uh, and it's very clear that we need to be able to offer meetings throughout the day. And so we will offer daytime meetings, we will offer after school meetings, and then evening meetings as well. Uh, the other side of it was, uh, very quickly, we remember that we have a large Hispanic population and we need to reach out to them. So we will have meetings specifically in Spanish in order to ensure that they get the information clearly. Um, so what it'll look like is this, we'll have meetings starting on December 15th. Uh, we'll start with uh, the intermediate schools and hit Aldrich, McNeil and Cunningham and then we'll bring the meetings back to Beloit Memorial. Uh, that will kind of be our catch all for anybody that missed any of the previous meetings uh, and then anybody that is obviously closer to Beloit Memorial than they are to the other schools. Uh, any students who do not end up getting an iPad uh, December 15th through the 19th which will, there will be about 609 students that we will be giving iPads to at that point. The rest of the students will receive the iPads uh, in January. The goal is to get them all out before the end of the first semester in order to ensure that we don't have students rotating into classes where they already have all of the iPads in their hands. Um, so students who do not get parent consent are not enrolling and taking the iPad home 24 hours a day will be involved in a check-in, check-out system. What that will entail is this, a student will come to school and before eight o'clock will go up to the library where they will receive their iPad. We are currently tracking those iPads via Skyward. So you can see which iPad is connected to which student. It also allows us to be able to ensure that if an iPad is not brought back at the end of the school day, we know which student that iPad went home with. Um, there will be the ability to house about 500 iPads in the library for check-in and check-out each day, and so that will allow us to facilitate the rest of the students. So with that, I think I would like to end with just saying thank you. These folks have come out on two different separate occasions now um, to speak with you and to share their good news and experiences with the iPad, and I would extend a, a special thank you to Gary Studeman, who, where are you, Gary? that he sort of bravely volunteered for this journey into the land of technology and something that he certainly did not have to do. Um, but I certainly appreciate your courageous spirit and willingness to do that. So thank you, everyone.